Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big sh- Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. Well, go on, you know, Modell. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, threads, everything. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast 101, and you can find us everywhere. Thank you in advance. Okay. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, man, listen, man. Check it, man. Make sure you do what? Miss Jamaica said, man, make sure you become a member of Boss Talk 101. Hey, man, listen, man, we got a very special guest in here today. He is a frequent of the show. It's certain ones we have on here. They come through and they show us love, man. This guy right here been rocking with me for a long minute, man, ever since way back when. I met him in L.A. Me and him sat down, and we ain't stopped sitting down since, man. I told him Marv is in the building. That's right, that's right. Good to be here, Boss Talk. Oh, thank you for yes, coming, man. man. Listen, man. Hey, man, couldn't wait for the show. Couldn't stop in Dallas without hollering at Boss Talk. 101, what a boss is talk, man. Talk man, you know, um, you know, Boss Talk is, uh, we've been, you know, we've been checking things out. You know, we just sit around and, you know, we try to do these shows to make sure that we keep everything copacetic with all the people that view the channel. And you one of those guys that came on the channel early on. Uh, I had you viral from the moment I met you. When I brought you in here, I didn't know what was going to go on, but the Charleston White thing happened. Then also the Chris Brown thing happened. When I spoke about Chris Brown in here, boom, you know, it went crazy because people started saying, you know, oh, he got called out. You know what I'm saying? And then the next thing, you know, we're talking about Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown, baby. You know what I'm talking about? It got crazy. I, mean, I wasn't used to that kind of notoriety. You know, I robbed banks, man. People started looking at me, and I wonder what the hell, man, bro. Don't we know your hell? No, you don't know me. I got warrants. <laughs> the hell you talking about, man? man. And that, that notoriety is a, it's a blessing and it's a sin at the same time. You know, you're going through the airport and people looking at you. Uh, I get suspicious because you know I'm still one crime away from going to hell, man. You know, I. It's one thing I definitely want to talk to you about, man. And and I know you you being one that you you knew about you hung around Tupac back in the days when he was around and uh, had duties and whatnot. But uh, I watched a guy on another podcast, Keefe D. Now I'm I don't know L.A. business, but. He got on this podcast and he started talking about what was going on with some with Pac and uh, the dude Lonzo, whoever the guy was in the car, and all this stuff started strumming up, you know, different things. And then all of a sudden, I'm watching the news. And, well, I'm really not watching the news because stuff pop up on your IG and all on your. You don't even have to watch the news; it's coming to you whether you like it or not. And boom, they say we raiding the house, reopening a Tupac case. It well, messed that, my that, head up 30 yeah, years later? Yeah, that, you know, let me, this guy, and I don't know Keefe D from a can of paint. Yeah. He's in a different era than me, but I was there the night that this happened, right? Uh, I was on a detail with, I just left, uh, did a detail with Pac, um, Gridlock. We just finished the movie Gridlock, and myself, Captain Shaheed Muhammad out of the Nation of Islam, but we had the Nation of Islam on mic at the time. And uh, so this guy, Zip, that was supposed to have given him the gun. Um, And I've been talking to uh, uh, Big Low and Abdullah that was on the detail, and um, Anthony. We were all in the dressing room after the fight. Like I say, I don't know uh, this guy, Keefe D, at all. I don't remember him. But Zip was in the locker room at that time. Zip left the locker room, went to the underground, and went to Mike's house. Mike had just had a baby, his little daughter. And they went back to the house off of Eastern. So Zip, from my understanding, left with the Michael with the Mike Tyson entourage. With all the cameras and everything, where is the picture of him giving Keefe D a gun? Now Gang banging is real in the city of Bompton, California. This is some serious shit. 
Now this brother Orlando, he's a South Side Crip. Arch enemies with the mob, Lutus Park, Hollywood, and Limehood. Those are arch enemies. At the time, death row was the biggest thing since Mother's Oatmeal. Suge bought about almost a thousand tickets for Pyrus to come to the fight. You feel what I'm saying? Any crip out of their mind if they think they're gonna come to Vegas by themselves. Orlando's a gang member. On that footage, why would he stand there in the auditorium by himself? Keefe D said it was three of them came together. Where was the other two men when he got into the altercation? This thing was, a, it's deeper. Than, Keefe D ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, for one. You dig what I'm saying? So now we say, well, from the incident, when this incident first happened in the MGM Grand, they're talking about that Orlando got beat down. So when did he meet with Keefe D and the other two guys and get in the, in the white Cadillac? And from Compton to Las Vegas is less than 400 miles. We all carry guns. Why would a man way from New York have to give a man from California a gun? How does that sound illogically? And then when you look at the incident, they came out of Las Vegas Boulevard, came down Las Vegas Boulevard to Flamingo. 662 was, was on, on, on Flamingo, 1700 East Flamingo. So when they got shot, if Keefe Denman was coming from where the club was and looking for him, and they made this massive U-turn, how is Suge's rims, he had to hit the curb on the right side, and you came up on the right side. Well, how does it, and out of this whole thing, nobody sees the car, it's a white Cadillac. How do you get back to Compton and never get stopped? Mm -hmm. I'm telling Keefy e. D this, out of my mouth to his, he better do a snowfall, he better do, he better do a, a freeway wreck. And tell them, because partner, your story don't line up. Now they don't need you anymore. Ugh. Now they're going to come up with some shit called forensic. You can't, niggas can't beat forensics. You understand me? And he ain't sharp enough to, what he doing with a computer? He can't even play on his phone. The man is a dummy. What would they be looking for in his house 30 years later? Man, it's time to eliminate him because th this is bigger than what people think. It was a move to get rid of Suge. Suge did not play with the rules that white America wanted him to play. And it wasn't white America, this is a Compton thing. And it's a elements in Compton that happened and they seen where they could make a move. Look at the people that profited. After everybody that didn't have the story of what they wanted to be here. Frank Alexander, dead. Michael Moore, dead. Bunchreal, dead. All the members in the car with uh, Orlando, but Keefe D, dead. How so, do I, so why only him still alive? He only alive for right now. The story went on that everybody believed. Well, Keefe D said, he, how you say you, that's before and after a fact. He, he got a deal with the feds, his handler. Mm. Who, who was his handler was, a, was a, a, a deputy DA. And he made a proffer agreement with the feds because he got busted with drugs. He never dealt with Keefe D like that. It was never, you think Puffy gonna get somebody a million dollars? And just so happened, well, Puffy know from New York that a killing was gonna go down today. <laughs> and just so happened, Zip had a, a Glock 40 to give to the murderers. You know, so you have to start looking at logic. Mm -hmm. How does, you know, we, 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 Negroes, we deal with emotion. Oh yeah, he killed. And then nine months later, after Orlando gets killed, amazingly the Compton PD go to his girlfriend's house and get the murder weapon. Brought it back to Vegas and like, Vegas, but get that shit out of here. Mm -hmm. What this bull, this that Compton mess again. Mm -hmm. Will come, will Vegas, blew the investigation. No, they didn't. Uh, Gaddafi was one of the outlaws. He described who 
arm was out, and it wasn't no tall, dark-skinned dude that he described. Man, we don't talk to the police. The police telling somebody don't talk to the police? Mm. That and strange. Gaddafi dead too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you said this was all a plot to get Suge out of the way, but once Suge was arrested and he's in prison, um, why even drum it, still drum all of this stuff back up? But you have to keep, you know, the, the devil, the only way the devil has power is to keep chaos, huh? Mm-hmm. So you, the only way I can establish my power. No, okay, let's look at wh how Suge got arrested. N Orlando never pressed, pressed charges on him. L Las Vegas Police Department never pressed charges on him. Mm -hmm. So how did L.A. get this in from who told him that Suge was there? Mm -hmm. And the one, one thing about it, the only person in the world that ain't even a gang member is Suge. He ain't never told on nobody. Everybody told on him, but he's never told them. The DA asked him something to do. That's why he got the nine-year violation. He said, man, I ain't telling you nothing. But we should know who told on him because it should be in court documents. It is. It is, but we look all the top, all over the top of it. Mm. It's like I said, it's plain as the nose on your face. You don't want to look at your own nose. Mm -hmm. You know? So... That incident happened there. It's bigger than Keefe D. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than Keefe D. Way bigger than, man, look at that man got a room temperature IQ. He couldn't mastermind his way out of a paper sack. But he better do a snowfall. He better, he better, <laughs> he better he start better, talking. He better tell on say, man, who made that story up for you? Man, that's crazy because I heard he was writing a book or something. Mm -hmm. He can't write. He can't spell his name. White folks is writing a book for him. He wrote a book. Now, I don't know. I wasn't there. I, he just Allegedly, he got a book deal. Yeah, yeah. Shahid, you keep, Muhammad is, is dear to you because you always say you was on detail for him. Um, One of the greatest mans on the West I wanna, Coast. I, I want to hear a little bit. I, cause we, you always mention him, but we never go into detail on who he is. I, I went back and looked at my, you know, my, 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 my interviews, you know what I mean? And I, you always say he had your own detail here or you was doing this and you, all, you know, just pretty much just, you know, doing what you had to do when you was doing it with him. Like, who is he and, and what does he represent in L.A. or did he represent in L.A.? Because he passed, right? Yeah. OK. Yeah. He's still representing L.A. OK. Well, he's still representing represent L.A. Man, uh, giants don't die, they multiply. OK. You know, Shaheed Muhammad is West Coast. He's a uh, uh, was the West Coast captain for a Moss 54, Compton, California, uh, or, or an original out of LA, original uh, businessman, old gangbanger businessman, went to the Black Panthers, um, was in 80 countries with Minister Farrakhan on the E-Team, loved the Nation of Islam more than life itself, and brought uh, always was the pinnacle was the, of the excellent. Uh, this man here, 90% of the nation that's, that's up today had come through under Shaheed Muhammad's tutelage. You know, uh, had um, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, put us on Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston detail, um, uh, um, um, Aaliyah's uncle, Barry Hankerson, who had me on Barry Hankerson detail, Eraser with uh, uh, Vanessa Williams, uh, Rosewood with uh, John Singleton. I mean, uh, for a dude out of Compton, just come about the penitentiary. You know, I had some of the greatest details and been around the world with this dude. Wow, you know, that's, that's crazy. How did he end up? You said something. You said you said gang bang, but also um, he was uh, he was a Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. What? Because you had I know I was out of town and it came up and I called about it. Uh, people question the fact of you being a Muslim, uh, again some, being some, yeah, being yeah, one that's related to Piru issue, the oldest yeah, Piru it yeah, ever made. It, it was supposed to be this guy, uh, Terrence, uh, yeah, Pan yeah. Uh, uh, Prankster Williams. Okay, yeah. Just, uh, so, so what? What? And I didn't get to ask you about that, but just like. Is there, I don't know how you would break that down or break that out. I mean, it's out. easy to break it down because it's, you, in, in America, it's separation of states. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't question gang members that say they're Christians. 
You got gang crips that go to T.D. Jake's church, go to uh, 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 Jones, Noel Jones Church. It's just like you go to church, right? <laughs> you got massive murders that go to church. I'm not making the comparison, but in the nation of Islam, that's my religion. That's what I do. That's my way of life. Pyru is a business. I don't believe in my life that I'm going to Pyru heaven. Ain't no shit like that. I got it. I didn't. I will never get jumped in a game. And I, hey, if you hit me, we're enemies. I don't have for me and my friends grew up together. We fight other people. We don't fight each other. And if it was something for me to do to be around with you, we either go get at the police, kill white boys. That's what we did in prison. They didn't turn gang members. Like you just mentioned, your boy OG Percy and this other guy. Um, What's his name? DuPont. Um, what's the other one's name? Uh, it's OG Percy. Another one to hang out with Charlie. Dewberry. Oh yeah, yeah. We, I, I, it's, it's such a transition in the South in California. California, we got more. The only other prison that have more prison killings in California is New York, and that was Attica, and they killed sixty police in nineteen seventy mm -hmm. in Attica. Ain't nobody get as busy killing police in California. You, you Southern boys, y'all kill each other, talking about, I'll beat this. But you ain't never talked about killing a police or beating up a white boy or a Mexican. I hear him bring, you got this other old man, older than, I don't even think he older than me, but he looked bad. Felice, Felice Johnson, the booty bandit, the booty warrior. And he's on bragging. And you get on these podcasts and you degrade us in prison system that we don't stand for shit. You know what I'm saying? In California, we made a president all over the world. Somebody do something to a black, six of them gotta die. They didn't go around. I mean, we ravaged each other. Some people did, but it wasn't wholesale. You feel what I'm saying? So we have a whole different politics in us a value system in California. It's everybody against black. We don't even have time to have Crips and blood, Piru situations in prison because everybody against us. You dig what I'm saying? They, now they're into it, but blacks don't run the prison system in California anymore. The Mexicans do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They say whoever control the ghetto, whoever control prison control the ghetto. The Mexicans control the prison, they control the ghetto. I look at the interviews that these dudes are doing and talking about how they DP'd and they transformed another block. <laughs> but you ain't never made one podcast that you did an IB, an initiation of blood, against one of them Proud Boys or Ku Klux Klan or slapped the warden in the mouth. I come from Trojans. Death Row Jeff, uh, Matt Dillon, uh, 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 Modicia, all of these dudes had a uh, 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 motor mouth, Buford Beard, all of these dudes had six or seven institution murders, killing white boys and Mexicans, not their own. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they didn't just send me to do it, they did it first. I remember my first IB. I caught a case in YTS a little bit, and they sent me to San Quentin from Youth Authority. And it was my assignment to go take this dude out in his cell, right? Me and another guy. As I go in the cell, but when I go to breakfast that morning, they have my favorite food. Scrambled eggs and, and, and a big old breakfast roll. I'm eating, I'm young, naive, I'm eating. We, child time comes, I, we go up in this dude's cell. Now you got three minutes and 47 seconds to do what you gotta do because the gunman is on that back bar. When he comes up, and the, if he don't get you in, the, the man locks the gate, he's going to lock you in the cell with a dead man. So I go in there, and I'm thinking that this is just blase. I didn't know how people fight for their life. They didn't, you just ain't going to kill a man. You know, sometimes y'all shoot and find out you caught a murder in the police station. Mm. But to walk up personal and look at a man in the eye and stab at him, oh, it's a whole different dynamic <laughs> to doing that because he ain't going to just let you kill him. Mm -hmm. This Mexican grabbed me and held on to me in that five by nine cell and my partner was stabbing him and I started panicking 
and I'm trying to jerk away from this mess and blood is everywhere and I'm getting scared because I am scary. <laughs> and the next thing you know, I shit on myself. No. Damn. Had to get out because I, I learned then. Before I do anything, don't eat before you do it. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So you see, that one didn't go too well. No. I would have thought if somebody um, at they throw up more than doing that. So I, would, I know what I, stage you, is in, right? It depends on how the pressure is. The pressure going to your stomach, you understand me? If, if And if you drink too much, you'll piss on yourself. You mm -hmm. hear some dude got socked and they pee right on their chest. When I hit this boy, he pissed on himself. Man, <laughs> you know, you got BGF, UBN, you that's tree, a whole nother. Yeah, but you got treetop, all of these things sanctioning when you go in like through the system of jail. You see now that's just like you got to, if you believe the fallacy now, that that's California, note, right? That, that a note gets put under your door. We don't want you that bad. If you can't put in work, you couldn't be a BGF. Just get over there with the niggas and play dominoes and shit. Explain what a BGL feels yeah, for that's people. What I we from, like for see, me. we being a Texas folks, okay? It, that's a California thing. It's, it's all over thing. No, I mean, really? black, it's a black gorilla family. Let's talk about this, that. Uh, it, it started with the Black Panther Party. The, well, it, 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 it was the Black Hand first. That's what, uh, uh, before Doc Dem started, uh, um, uh, damn, what's his name? Well, I can't remember the brothers' names. It's the, the OGs that really started the Black Hand, and it went in from the Black Hand, and the Black Panther Party came up, and uh, George Fleeter, um, uh, um, not Rochelle, George Fleeter, uh, John Cluche out of Compton. Those are the Solidad brothers, and they formulated the BGF, the Black Gorilla Family, the Dragon. And they brought that in as a revolutionary concept on a prison element aside from the Black Panther Party was a neo -po uh, uh, political movement on the street. So the BGF sole concept was to search and destroy. Mm. And that's to dominate the prisons. To In 1969, uh, George... John Cluche out of Compton and Flea the Drumgo, they uh, allegedly killed the police in Soledad in 1970, 19, uh, 1969. 1970, George's brother Jonathan tried to break him out of jail. He didn't come to court though, and they had the Marin County killing, and they shot Rochelle McGee 33 times and oh. didn't kill him. Everybody got killed in the van, a, a, a judge, a district attorney, and some. So Jonathan was 17 years old and went and took over the courtroom, right? And 1971, uh, O.C. Allen, Jesse Phillips, Roosevelt, Jimmy James, they killed the police in O-Wing and Soledad. They were the Soledad 7 out of Compton. Wow. Yeah. So... They came, came to San Quentin, 1971. George Jackson got killed on the San Quentin yard. The police killed him in 1971. So that was the building of the BGF, the Black Gorilla family. That's before Crips, that's before uh, Bloods, that's before Pyrus. They were, and before them, like I said, Captain Shahi was a businessman. After the businessman, it was the Slawsons, the Gladiators. Those the, we've had gangs ever since. So uh, those gangs Adam before, and Eve. Yeah. before Crips and Blood, there was gangs before that. Yes, you what you thought they just popped up. We had uh, when you say businessman you was it UBN? Oh. No, a businessman was a, a you UBN is a part of a uh, a set that they brought up. It didn't UBN didn't start till eighty six okay. eighty seven. You know, you had, before that it was called, they had, a, for the Bloods in Tracy, it was called Bloodline, you know. But those are gang elements. You just came out of prison, but those are the gang elements on the Blood side. Then the Crips, they had C-Notes. Uh, C-Notes. What was the other? Well, you have to talk to Melvin about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because all you keep hearing is Bloods and Crips, so it's like, 
and all these other gangs like derive from that so like it just baffles me like i just didn't know that there was actually other gangs before bloods and Crips. oh yeah oh yeah i'm like i say one i originally grew up i originally grew up my neighborhood was called treetops treetop mm -hmm. yeah. yeah because all our streets i'm from elm street we right, ran freddie right. cougar out of there so all the streets were named after trees. Mm -hmm. Fruit Town is cherry, fig, plum. So they became a fruit town. The swamps in Compton, because it was a swamp over in their neighborhood, so they was the swamp area. Then they had Spook Town because the train tracks came through 12 o'clock at night and they go, woo, and they thought it was spooks. Right. Then they had what Nutty Block was, they were called Boot Hill because they got the two graveyards in their neighborhood. And those are all names of gangs before Bloods that and Crips. That was before, even from the 60s. Oh, okay, because, you know, even when you think about Treetop nowadays, I think about Treetop Pyroos. Pyroos, right. So I'm not thinking about another gang before yeah, that's what that people called. say. Well, Pyroos and Bloods are the same thing. Mm -hmm. I beg to differ because... It's a good thing you said that because when I was, I don't know how much Google is correct, but when I was doing some research on it, when I think, it, who was it? Owens and, um, what was the other guy? It was Owens and uh, Scott, who they say that started the Sebastian power. Scott. Right, right. right. So, Vincent, L little Vincent. Because it was a fight or whatever that caused, right. but the thing is that if those two guys were together, why didn't they start um, the Bloods together instead of creating one created Bloods and one created Paru? No, Why that's did they? Not, no, the Vincent and uh, Sylvester Scott. Right. Vincent and Sylvester, they're both. Paru is a street in Compton. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a gang. It's a street, and all the all every family had five or six boys on their street. Mm -hmm. So they were the Paru boys, and so once that situation happened. And they because start calling them roosters mm -hmm. because it was red, and they would so we the Pyru boys. So once they became roosters, and the bloods out of L.A. was in red too. So they associated. You know what I'm saying you you got different branches. It's the military, but you got the navy, you got the army. They not the same, are they? But they are military. Mm -hmm. The air force don't do what the army does. The navy don't do what the marines do. Pyru with ten square miles. It ain't but two sets in Compton, Pyrus and Crips. We don't have no bloods in in Compton, California. Right, right. It's not a blood set in California, but it's a blood set Circle Cities in in Watts. You got thirty Pyrus in East LA. You got uh, Avenue Pyrus in Inglewood. You got neighborhood Pyrus. You got Pyrus in Pacoima. You got Pyrus in Pomona. You got Pyrus in Sacramento. We got Pyrus all over the world. So it wasn't Benson Owens who started like Lil Vince and Lil Vince grew up on Pyru and Putin grew up on Pyru. So he didn't actually start it though, that gang. They they were the original. They were the original seven dudes that were put the name out. Oh, okay, okay. I was just trying to figure it out because when I'm doing research and reading, I'm like, those were the only two names that they mentioned. Right. And I'm like, okay, so if they were friends, like why did they just create one big one instead of having yes, they the- they got one big one. Because when you talk about Fruit Town, when you talk about Cedar Block, when you talk about Campanella, it wasn't like it is today. It was just, I, because you can hear a lot of Crips talking about their activities, mm -hmm. but you very seldom, and I've never heard, you cannot tell a LA Crip they came in and did a drive-by in Compton. Mm -hmm. Because our streets are so confusing. If you're not from there, you can't just come up in there and get, because everything down Rosecran is all Pyrus. From the Harbor Freeway down to the 710, and in the middle of that is Santana Block, Crips. But everything from one freeway to the other freeway on Rosecran is all Pyrus. From 135 to Cross Atlantic, everything in between. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know where you're going, you can't go east or um, north or south, east or west, and not get your hat brought to you. Mm. So it, it ain't many dudes that's going to come across El Segano or 120th to do anything in Compton because it's not their terrain. But we'll go to their neighborhoods, bus and come right on home. I don't do that kind of stuff. I got, I got 
big business with white America. I ain't got time to shoot a white, a black man for what? Mm. Well, let's, let, let me ask you a question because I, I and I got to go to there. Um, this guy Slick, I seen him on the online talking uh, pretty bad about you and saying that you wasn't a real uh, pirate. What just pirate. wasn't real? He he just questioned your 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 credibility in the neighborhood. Like, um, call him now. <laughs> <laughs> call him now. He's a legend. He's a legend. Oh, he said I wasn't a legend. He's a legend now. Yeah. I mean, what gives someone the audacity to even speak on you? How how did that even come about? I don't know. I I, I know how it came about, but it's been situated, you know. Uh, slick a good dude. I mean, you know, he just he was just misguided. So you know, sometimes you, the pecking order is so out right now. You know, they say if you play with a play with a dog, or play with a puppy, he'll lick you in the mm -hmm. face. That stuff. So we got so many of these young dudes that think that we through, and that they think they, they can say anything out their mouth. This media got people confused. It's, uh, I had to change my 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 monogram. They call that OG. Uh, Original gangster, mm -hmm. I'm a RG, a real gangster. Mm -hmm. If you fuck with me, I will shoot your ass. Period. Wow. If you run down Rosecrans and fuck with me, something is gonna happen. Or something gonna happen to me. Wow. Some people just talk that shit. I'm about that shit, really. So it's certain things that, that go down and then you have to question the people around you. What kind of guidance are you getting to talk to somebody like that? And think it's not going to have a, a a bad result, you know, and and so it's every now and then things have to happen and for for us to get clear vision. Who I had to learn it's certain things I I thought in prison I could think shit you know got got my ass busted on it. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I I thought one time that man I was invincible and thought I had everything together. Thought I man, I thought I was on. I thought I was on my swerve. I'm standing in the. That's what stopped. I got off the, the main line in prison. We just went on to the hole. I'm standing in in the um, the canteen line with my people around me. And uh, boy, this white boy Jack Murphy ran up on me and stabbed me in the back and left the knife and ran off. What? Mm. I'm like, oh shit! Like so, just for no reason. I'm black. He don't like me. I don't like him. So he stabbed you in the back with a knife. Yeah. Then just ran. And That's just a coward got, move. That's a cowardly move. It's cowardly. But do what you got to do. I should have been on mine. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So I, I took it. I mean, this is in San Quentin. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I didn't die because I didn't fall. And when he hit me, it was like a million bolts of lightning. Shug me, and I just didn't want to die in prison. And the, I wa the police tell me, get on the ground, get on the ground. I walked all the way to the hospital. And when the doctors, when they x-rayed, they said, if I had taken the knife, I just couldn't yeah, pull bleed the knife to, out. Bleed to death. I'd have hit my lung and I'd have bled to death. Mm. But it wasn't my time. Wow, so you basically, well, how far was the infirmary or how far was the place where you had to go? Shit, uh, like a hundred, like, like 20 like miles. To, to <laughs> <laughs> it fell longer than what it was, I yeah, bet. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was, it's, the upper yard is right here. You have to walk over to the rotunda to A section, walk through C section to the hospital. Then somebody got to open the gate of the hospital. So the police escorted me on because I was not stopping. They told me to lay down. I'm not laying no day. I would think that they would tackle you if you're nah, not trying to lay down, do what they tell you to do. I, I get, I, I'm glad they didn't tackle me, but uh, they knew I was trying to get up out of there. They seen the knife in my back. <laughs> Well, I want to I, I want to go back though just a little bit. I want to talk about the difference between see people beef online, and they feel like it's okay to say whatever they want to say online. They don't expect it to come to no real and that's you know no, that's, hold on let me let me okay. finish. They don't expect it to come to no real problem. Right now, but you from the old school, it it can be an issue if somebody say the wrong thing on online. I found out I'm not podcast worthy. My feelings are easily hurt, man. I say shit to you. If you say something back, I'll be butt hurt. So you just can't say shit to me and think it's just over. This is just a podcast. I tell a man, 
Slick just got what I was going to give to a, a, a whack 100. It's talking about knocking me out. Whack 100, and you and whack 100, he 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 backed off of you, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he he got his where he wanted to be. He be in Dubai. I can't go to Dubai. I'm on federal parole, so he gonna stay out my way. Wow. But anybody that this that's gonna be in my way, they should walk tread lightly on what they say to people. Because everybody ain't like, okay, it's just like I've never been the type of dude that me and my folks ain't been the kind of dude that you get drunk and uh fuck you, E, I don't give a fuck about and they say a drunk speaks a sober mind. So you've been wanting to say that to me all the time. So we, when you get sober, we got to talk about that. Yeah, It got to be an issue. That, oh, man, I was drunk. I don't know. We're going to remember what you said. <laughs> yeah, it's going to come back to you just like it came back in a dream. But like with, but, with, like with WAC 100, though, because you guys never met, y'all talked on the on phone. I remember the recording you brought, and you let us hear it, and it was some harsh words said. Yeah. Could there be, clo like, bridges? Could, could there be, a, 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 like, a conversation? Amending? With, yeah. No, just stay out my way, I'll stay out yours. It's no, I mean, it ain't no, we grown men. We got bigger challenges, and I find out that I shouldn't have took it personal, but I, it, it's certain things he shouldn't have said. Uh, I'm gonna show you what this bag gonna do. That's critical in my life. You got enough money, so you gonna put a hit on me? So if I just take that lightly, if I allow you to say it, the next lame going to say it or the next lame going to do it. Was that after was was the slick uh, talk on the Internet after you had dealt with WAC 100? Yeah, that was slick. So that was afterwards. Do you think that kind of the, they seen you as a target on there? And were like, I can go and talk about him now since somebody else did. Or? Yeah, well, Slick got on. Was they, see, that was the thing with me and him because he had got on the show with this brother, Melly Mel, and he started trash me. I let it go. Then he got on the, with Wack 100. Oh, he got on with Wack oh, 100? Yeah, oh, yeah, man. He ain't this or he ain't that. You know, they, they buffaloed. But, you know, it didn't work out well. It didn't work out well. Nah, nah. So basically, I seen him, when I seen the guy, uh, I seen it on the internet, he was in a neighborhood mm -hmm. talking. That's what I seen. Right, yeah. And I don't know if it was your neighborhood. No, his neighborhood. He wasn't in your neighborhood. No, he was in his neighborhood. Okay, so, because I, I had thought he was in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, but he was in there just talking about, because your name came up on that, that, that skit, that talk. That right. you know, he kept talking yeah. about you, yeah. and I was like, "Dang, where is this coming from?" Because I always look your name up. Right. I didn't know him, I, but I knew I know you, so I started looking like. And then, lo and behold, you know, next thing I heard, I heard some things. It got street, you know what I mean? That that things kind of changed on him. Uh, well, <laughs> to, we all right, you know? Yeah, just, just, just you know, uh, shoot, uh, families fall out sometimes. Yeah, you know, but we don't we don't we don't hold grudges. On he a shit. Pyru himself. Yeah, yeah. He's so he's camp. Pyru. Yeah, he's a camp from Campanella. Wow, I didn't. You know, I thought that would have been off limits. I did too. <laughs> you <laughs> know what I mean? Show you, I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but on the internet, it, it can spill into the streets. Is pretty much what what I gather. You know. Certain things you got to watch what you say on the internet. See, a lot of these younger people always feel like once you get gotten older, you need to like sit down and just retire, sit let down and let stuff go. And I think that's what a lot of these young cats feel because in today's but it's, society, it, it, it's, it's, it's they feel like that because old niggas allow them to do it. So when I was coming up, you ain't got a mustache, you can't talk. Your whatever you say should be verified. Mm. I don't care if an old man in my neighborhood was a wine or you respect the dude because he'd get up and slap the hell out you on that wine bottle. Crack cocaine took black men's heart. And you got 30 years of absence that these black kids ain't had nobody in their face. And then here you come around, you looking healthy and you, you old and man, somebody going to challenge you. But I stand to the challenge. I'm good with it. If you kill me, I ain't got more years behind me than I got in front of me. Wow. But if I do something to you, you looking bad in front of the homies. Yeah. You let yeah. that old man whoop your ass like that, bro. <laughs> so pick and choose. 
You know what I'm saying? And it's our fault as elders. Man, well, I was just in uh, North Carolina and they had some situations in North Carolina and a little kid got killed in the crossfire. And these preachers was, let us, uh, everybody go to Jesus instead of going to the street. You've been praying for 600 years without a solution. Anybody does the same thing over and over again repetitively, it's called insanity, huh? Mm -hmm. So you're looking for the same thing. They say if they won't treat you right, how do you expect them to teach you right? The Christian Bible puts you in slavery. How in the hell you think it's going to get you out? Uh. So you sit there with some children that's been raised on San Andreas Fall, Call of Duty, and you go to tell them, let's all grab hands and pray. So, nigga, you out your mind, old nigga, get back. So instead of you sitting up in his church, hooping and hollering, go out in the neighborhood every day and stand up against these youngsters. If they want to fight, fight. If they want to die, die. If you believe in your God like you do. I say in my life, my life, my death, and my sacrifice is all for Allah. I fear nothing but God. And I've been here too long, man. The things I've been through, good and bad. Wow. Do you, I mean, do you ever think about like, you know, these youngsters, they look up to you. A lot of the youngsters look up to you. Uh, they see you on the internet. They they look at you as an example as far as the Pyrus go. Mm -hmm. Your title everywhere we look is OG Pyru. OG Pyru, the oldest Pyru, the elder, you know what I mean? Um, what can you, what do you do to try to influence them, you know, to stay I alive? let them see me working. I hit my streets every day. I'm down Rosecran every day. I don't hang out with them. I don't smoke weed with them. I don't drink with them. If I can't say nothing positive to them, I don't say nothing at all. I don't try to tell them what to do. I try to show them what to do. That's a difference. So what do you do when you walk down Rosecran? You just, cause you say you don't hang out with them. So what do you do? Drive up to the park, intimidate a couple of niggas. <laughs> Ride down, man, you still on Rose Grand Mark? You did where I'm going, where I'm going to go. You know, it's if you keep on feeding them, they start looking like you. Yeah. You know, so all you got to do is see them. Okay, this dude been through this. If Marv can do it, anybody can. I'm not out smoking crack. I'm not out talking about what the, the money I spent in 1978. Most of these kids wasn't born then. But I'm a homeowner. I, I, I drive a nice car. I do what I do. I don't hang out. I don't misinform you. I don't try to have you selling dope. I don't take you on no jacks. I don't do a lot of talking because I'm not a politician. But when you see me, I just say, man, I'm, and it's so crazy. In my neighborhood, like you say, everybody around, then see, they act like I've never been, like I'm nobody. Mm. The ones clearly, like they talk about Jesus or right there in his own neighborhood, he's just a carpenter's son. Mm -hmm. But every crib, oh gee, man, like, I, like I took. Yeah, you I, said that before you got more love It was crazy, I'm like, man, what the hell? Man, man, they just, they probably saw you on there. You didn't see me on no damn internet. We go to fun day Sunday, yeah, I look, I see dudes in blue looking at me, I'm like, man, what the hell I do? Hey man, OG, yeah, we saw, we like what you're doing. Pyrus don't embrace me like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. They hold their nuts on me, like, fuck more. But why you think that's so? Because nobody, everybody want to be the better. Don't nobody, fuck more. Hey, where he from? Hey, what, what he do? Where he from? Think I was in Compton before any of y'all was born. I, the whole plantation belonged to me. Wow. I earned it. But a lot of them haven't even been able to live this long to be able to talk about it. Ain't, ain't been, I'm the oldest one. The oldest one. Uh, the only one. That speaks volume. When he start, when he do this, when he, when, check my record. They be asking you that all the time. Amongst each other. Mm. They don't ask you. Man, more, so-and-so said, a mm. third person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to know. You say you from fruit time, but you always talk about treetops and you say this. And so I have to give them the explanation 
how the the metamorphosis from the the caterpillar grew up into the butterfly. But if you've been where you've been for as long as you've been living, they should know. Go ask their daddy, grandpa, somebody older, yeah. so they can you know know. They don't need to. They, these kids do. If it's not, if it doesn't come up on the internet or in their phones, they don't ask nobody. Mm. You guys, um, I remember last time we talked about um, you when the guy got ran over and Suge was out there. I seen that video before he was on there. I didn't see that video. It's a video of that online. Okay. And it shows you. I seen you in the street. I mean, you know. It it shows you pulling somebody out of something. I just remember seeing it like that day had to be to make you know the internet like that had to be a heck of a day. Hell yeah, that was a Suge night day. You know what I'm saying? But it's just something. But Suge, he was the type of guy that get himself in trouble. That was that that wasn't purposely done though, was it? No, not at all. So what? It was an accident. It was an accident. So what caused the, the whole situation? Hey, same situation happened in 1996. What? <laughs> what do you mean what happened in 1996? You talking about with Pac? Suge was there too, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay. He was the actual target. Oh, okay. Was it a guy bone or something there? Was it? I might have that story wrong. Yeah, I don't know. But I know. I just know it was a it was a hell of a day. That's all. Yeah. I just know I seen the when I when I had seen the. Uh, the it's unfortunate, you know, the the, the stuff that happened with Shug, uh, but uh, it, man, you know. I'm telling you, it's a video out there. That video shows online everywhere. Mm. It's got views. Yeah. Got I seen views. It. Yeah, huh? it got views. I got views. But I think it's because I think it's it like the news. It, it made news. It made headline news. That that was a hell of an incident. Oh yeah, that was, it was. Cause when I started looking, I was like, man, I'm gonna ask him about this one. I'm looking up everything that, that has your name attached to it. Yeah. You know, and it that's was, one of the things that got your name attached to it. Yeah, it so, was a a situation. Two two of the attorneys. One of them got put in prison. The other one got his uh, bar license taken from him. Uh, so yeah, it was. I went through fourteen attorneys. And it was it was a it was a circus. Hell of a hell of a day. Uh, hell of a day. So when you when you look at the way these uh the the celebrities come to California, a lot of them California has a reputation uh, for people getting jacked, getting killed, not making it home. Um, is this something to be proud of? As as being California Compton, but you in in California. Eh? What? I'm from Comp. I'm from Bompton, California. Ain't nobody got killed in Bompton. Okay, so could the check That's in. LA. Yeah, the check in thing. And, and and right now they're going through a lot up there. I see now on the news in the malls they running up in jerking stuff and running right out. I'm not they're, playing. They're that just started though. Yeah, that, and but but the people that you see most doing that now are clear people. They even got desperate. Mm. Yeah. It, 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 uh, darkies, you gonna get when you get to Wilshire, they gonna stop you. I heard they running in like like when I seen it, there's the North malls Strong and everything. Yeah, right. They going 13, 14 deep. I was hearing they they wasn't taking them to jail for if it was less than nine hundred dollars or something. Ain't nothing, ain't, ain't nothing in in. Uh, it's uh, just a fine, uh, is what. Yeah, and, and I'm hearing that's what's causing the whole. Well, yeah, when you when you go in Louis Vuitton and and Neil ain't nothing nine hundred no ain't, ain't, every, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing there under nine hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's why they about. say that. <laughs> yeah, so they really they they out there bad if they had Neiman Marcus. Man, they hitting Beverly Hills like it's the thing. That's what I heard. Yeah, but what is causing all of that? Why are they uh, why Bi they feel Biden. so bold? What do you mean? What's causing all that? Uh, Joe Biden mm -hmm. and Kamala Harris. What the hell? These this uh uh. uh uh, slave master and, and his uh, 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 ninny, mm. you know. So two worst things could happen, but that's what America, you know, deals with. So that you you got what you you think because uh, Joe Biden worked under um, Obama. Obama that he'd be a, a good cracker. Do you know how many slave owners was? 
weaned off of black women growing up and still owned slaves? So you think that mentality would change? And you got a, a woman that's not a black woman, actually. What is she? She's, what is her mama? Uh, Indian or Oriental? She's not, she's not black. And she wakes up every morning with a white man. So what loyalty does she have with black people? You love who you love, huh? So if you wake up in the morning with a cracker, how much love you got for a nappy head like me? But then once you have children, those children is now what? They Pekka Woods too. So they're not black. 1% of Pekka Wood in you, you a Pekka Wood to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So was Trump any better? Yes, he was. Why? He was white? He, he, and Lily White. He's, he's what they call a wasp, white oaks, Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Okay. And he believed in white America. Mm -hmm. Keep it America beautiful. Mm -hmm. Trump was a businessman. He was not a politician. Trump is the first president in American history, and you can go Google it. He's the first president that ever taxed the 10 percenters, people that's making over $250,000. Mm -hmm. He's the first president to ever go into the UN and call out every country that owed a debt to America. You're not getting nothing else until China, give us our money, mm -hmm. Germany. So when he affected white America, they start crying. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with nappy heads. If Trump, ha if Trump had a wanted to, do you realize he didn't finance and helped most most of the black rappers, Puffy and all of them in New York when his businesses just wanted to be around blacks? But he never called a black out during his presidency, huh? Mm -mm. He's loyal to who's loyal to him. Mm. He, so, he's a real cracker. You ever heard of this story about Jocko? Mm -mm. Jocko was was a, a story about a little black boot boy. And uh, George Washington was on his way to the war. And Jocko wanted to come and fight in the war, the 12 year old black boot boy, right? Mm -hmm. And Jocko, uh, George Washington told him, no, you too young to fight. And he chased him all the way and said, when they got to the Potomac and they got on the boats, George Washington told Jocko, here, you hold my horse until I get back. And winter set in, right? And the snow started falling and the horse with horse sense, he broke away. And when George Washington got back, Jocko was laying there, stood up, froze to death mm. with the bridle in his hand. And when Washington went back and told about the life of Jocko, Every peck of wood on the plantation said, if we have a nigga this loyal, we wouldn't have to worry about anything. So they built little statues. So when you see the little statue of the little boot boy in front of white America, they thought their houses would be safe as long as the statue of Jocko was there. Mm. So it was a compliment to black America of your loyalty. The, the, Nappy head niggas, coons, and possums, the NAACP in, in the 60s said it, it was degrading and took the monument and made white folks get rid of the monument. So a lot of things that happened to us that white America glorify, we turn around and piss on them. Mm. For four years, gas didn't get over $3.20. Mm -hmm. Now it's damn near $8 in California. Right. So the only thing that Biden has done in his presidency, he didn't been to more drive-by funerals than any president in America. Mm. He's at every shooting it is. Huh? Do you think America should have a cap on how on age wise of how old you can be? I think to a, be a America president? should have a cap. But they shouldn't have Supreme Court justices in there for the life sentence. They shouldn't have these senators. That's eating up all, they're cutting your taxes, but they're making three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. But they say we're cutting back and we, we have a, 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 the, se the debt ceiling. So being political, I mean, that's something altogether different. Let you know? me ask a question. I'm gonna go back to the music a little bit. Um, 
you was locked up for at one time what was the longest spell that you was locked up 15 years 15 years um bg with uh uh cash money he just come home it's been he was gone for 11 years mm -hmm. uh bg um i just is, heard about is, him is an morning. artist right mm -hmm. um just coming home after all those years when you came home how was it readjusting and, and, and just trying to understand just how to move around with the differences that had happened in technology? Even in that time, from the difference, when I came home, I had never been to a mall before. Okay. And, and I, I, I went to a mall, it was the Del Almo Mall. And in prison, everything is clockwise. When you go here, everybody's going, this. if you're going against, you getting killed or you killing somebody. So your life is clockwise. So everything is in, you have a bell to wake up to go to breakfast, you got a bell to go to child, you got a bell to go change your laundry, you got a bell, to, and everybody gets up on a rhythmatic time. In America, y'all don't do that. I wake up in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, my mother them still sleep. I'm just sitting there. What the fuck, where's child at? <laughs> So it's a whole, even with a foundation, and I had a foundation, it's an adjustment. You got a routine, your celly coming, he come to the cell, y'all walking twos, going to the chow hall, everybody got a knife. Mm. And you wake up in the morning in your mama house with a man-made knife, you know, what the hell? You, know? you did not do that. You know what I'm <laughs> so I, my mom then took me to the mall, and I went to the mall, and I'm, shell shock because Pecker Woods is, is walking all across you walking I'm looking around and these people is bumping into you because they don't have the same savage mentality I have that's right mm -hmm. because where I come from it ain't but two things in the jungle predator and prey mm -hmm. and if you're not the predator you the prey so when it's my time to feed back your ass up when it's your time to feed back my ass up but on the streets, you bump into shit. Huh? That's the American way. But people, that's just like PS, P, what is PSD? The soldiers PTSD. Coming, PTSD coming from Iraq and Iran. Same prison theory. They've been locked on murder, doing this and doing that, and then they come here and you holler at him, and you're not, and you're not supposed to get killed. Wow. So, California, they start seeing that. They have what they call decompression chambers. You just can't come out of a high level prison and come go to the street. You have to go down and get decompressed. For how long? Depends. 90 days, six months, a year, whatever it takes you. I'm, when I first came from San Quentin, they sent me to CMCEs. CMCEs is like a house. They got a bunch of rats there. They got a bunch of weird queers and steers. And I mean, they had homosexuals in San Quentin, but they was killers too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then you got dudes, you got, come, I get the CMCs, I get down there and dude walking in the child hall and this dude holler, hey officer, he cut the line. Oh. What the hell is this? Really? I said, man, what did he just tell on this dude? Oh man, that ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. I was there about a week. I went to the council. I said, bro, I can't stay here. Send me. He said, bro, if you can't make it here, you'll never can't make it, it on the street. Oh, dang. And that was your decompression camp right there. Yeah. Wow. So did you stay after he said that or did he, have, did he take I, I stood. I stayed. <laughs> How long did you stay for? I stayed there about. I think I stayed in CMC about a year. A year. About a year. Did you get used to it? Yeah. You know, you, you adjust. But like I said, I had a structure. I had a system. I, I didn't live off of prison. Prison mm -hmm. lived off of me. I had a visit every week. Right. My mom came to see me. When I was in San every month I get a visit. Mm -hmm. Unless I was in the hole or something like that. So it was a di But when a person has nothing, I got one of my, one of my uh, homeboys, uh, Bozzy, Bozzy been locked up since 1968. Don't have nobody visiting him. His mother's there, all his family's dead. Mm. And dudes, man, Bozzy a tripping. He, he used boys like women now. He don't. He went to prison at 16. He never had a girlfriend. Mm. Wow. 
Does that help when you have people like from, you know, outside society coming to visit? Yeah. Consistently? It's, 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 a, it's a balance. You know, it, 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 once, once you get it and you get focused, prison shouldn't be something you want to live in all your life. Mm -hmm. A man told me one time, he said, kids, you around here running around stabbing people. Anybody like the penitentiary like shit though in their face. Wow. But you have people who push their loved ones away for the main fact that they don't want them coming down to the prisons every week cause because they feel like a, they're putting be, their lives on hold. It, it, with certain ramifications, it's a humiliation in prison that you come to visit me and they make you take your bra off, they strip search you. Some people don't want that to happen to they people. Feeling, we had somebody talk about that, saying that they be feeling on some of those women yeah, who be coming you know, down there to down, visit. Man, one of my girlfriends, I'm in San Quentin, she come to, came to visit me, but she came to visit as my sister, right? And this guard tried to get at her. And like, he on the street, and he like, raining on my parade. And so he's like, man, what kind of, hey, I want to take you out and this and this and that. Come back, bam. And he goes and tells the visiting lieutenant, and that's not his sister. They in there kissing, they whoop de whoop de -whoop. Damn, they got my visits canceled. Got him put off the yard because mm. the wrath was getting ready to be real ugly, mm -hmm. you know. And so the visiting lieutenant was cool, like he had just changed his status to this and this and that. But why would you do that? Right. You know, so it's a vicious strand that you have to go through. And sometimes we so naive and pretty, we just think you're visiting, but it's the stuff your family have to go through. I want to ask you, because Master P talked about his grandmother going to the prison, so we got to, uh, Master P was talking about that when him and C. Murder was having a is having issues, and it, it became a public thing where it was being spoken. He said, man, my grandma going down there, you know, seeing you, we do, we love you, but, you know, you for him to turn back now and ha have a little bit of issues of, some sort, but just have you ever been locked up with somebody on a celebrity status that was getting visits in there that that basically was you know like on the level like a C murder, which is Master P brother? Uh, you, uh, you, mean, because Monica, that it's funny you said that about the bras and being taken off. I didn't even think about that that's that they would have about. to you know for Monica when she would go, she goes to see Monica is a singer, R and B singer. She have to go. I don't know the rules going into. Uh, the the uh, Angola and all those prisons down there, but she has to go through visitation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was tripping on, I'm like, man, them guards loving the fact that she a celebrity and she coming down there to see see murder. Mm, okay, you see what I mean, I'm saying? But, yeah, but now they have. But when I was in prison, it wasn't women guards. Now they got women guards. Now they got women guards. So it might make it a little in better. In the male prisons. In the male yeah, they prisons. Do. Okay. And then you have to submit to a woman coming in, which we didn't allow it in San Quentin. They brought three females in there, Mexicans, whites, and we climbed. We talked so many dick stories that they had to put them up in administration because hmm. it was not going down. They couldn't stand up to y'all. No, no, not if they, they got three chefs. We talking all up under your clothes, all on top of your mama clothes and everybody clothes. And we smelling you, girl. Yeah, you you real loud up in here. Should female guards be um, allowed to be so. in? I, it's, see, prison system, I can only speak in California. Texas prison is a whole different. Ball game. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I was in uh, in TDC for six months and got, got uh, 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 a... Uh, bench work which is a P.O. bond and I got uh, unwelcome guests of Texas and matter of fact y'all this is the first time out in Grace Texas since 1969 wow. and the judge told me if I come back so much as get a traffic ticket I'd do 99 years in Huntsville hard time Wow! and I didn't want to test him because I had 50 other states I could fuck up I didn't have to come back <laughs> to Houston you know what I'm saying <laughs> but um, they promote homosexuality Mm -hmm. Because a woman, you can't have naked pictures in your cell of a woman. You can't? No. Because, oh, it offends the female guards. Oh. But you can have pictures of men in muscles, muscle magazines. Oh. Right? Now, they can be all over. But you can't send your, if your husband was in prison, you send him some pictures in a language and stuff, they'll confiscate the pictures from you because that's contraband. Wow. Mm. That's crazy. You know? Um, mm. Okay, BG comes home. Now he's out, and he's uh, basically 
he has a lot of exposure to a lot of money, a lot of things that he had things before he left, but now I see, you know, they've been waiting on him. So it's not the same. He, uh, he's basically now at a point to where he's, uh, nobody's at that door, is it? No, that's next okay. door. Okay, so he's basically, you know, at a point now, he's home, um, he's hanging out, he's in the studio. The readjustment, I think it's gonna take, just gonna take some time, you know. Uh, with his status, 11 years ain't that, I mean, I don't know what kind of time, I don't know dude from a can of paint. Of course. But if he, a status, I went to prison with a status, and it never changed. You know, me and all my Compton homeboys, we all came in as a group. It was 250 of us for murder in San Quentin. You know what I'm saying? A man told me how to lose that, a Joe Louis Sturgis. He said, man, you know, in 1974, he said, Kenzie, I was just looking in the almanac the other day. He said, oh, you niggas in here for murder, man. He said, I, I thought Compton was big as China. <laughs> find out it wasn't but 10 square miles. I didn't even know that at that time, right? Wow. And he said, damn. And y'all going right back to the scene of the crime. He said, shit, when I get out, I'm going back to New Orleans. Wow. Why would you go back to Compton? <laughs> Where you committed the crime. Wow. You know, so it's the status, if he was having money and doing things, he's probably kept the same status in prison. It wasn't like he was broken, had to get it. He probably had soups and was living the lifestyle that them dudes was taking care of him on a, he had a status there, so when he came out, he's on the same level. It ain't like he went to the mud and coming out the mud like he did 20 months in the hole and had a murder and he had to do this, so he must have did his time all right to come out all right. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think there's a difference when you're in music because when you're a musician, you don't have, you have something called like an age cap, I would think, where when um, you, you're not using your talents and styles and things and time changes, it's hard for you to come out and readjust to it. No, I mean, it's just like a boxer go to prison. He keep on boxing. If he was rapping, he'd probably rapping in prison. I don't know what he was doing. You know, he wasn't picking cotton probably. You know, so, hey, man, you got everybody is dick hustling. Man, you would, man, homie, can, can you get me on? Man, I got this. So he was probably producing in prison. Mm -hmm. uh. Guards just going want, want to get with him and give him the best job because they, they, they don't want to deal with baby too. <laughs> so when you got that plug, you man, the only people go to prison, in, in my little estimate, the only people in the South that go to prison at a time, now today is a little different because of some bullshit, well they ain't got nothing now, but the only people went to prison at the time I was in prison, going to jail in the South is broke niggas. If your family had any money, you didn't have to go to prison. Mm. If they knew a white man, you didn't have to. The only person that went to prison, somebody didn't have nobody. Them the only ones who was getting 60 years, 50 years. Or if they want to make an example of you, you could have and money, and because they want to make it. That's only in California, but well, right now your money. See, in in I found out in the South. See, I grew up under racism, and I thought we was free niggas. Mm. I thought our shit was the hell of. I used to watch y'all getting water holes put on you in the '60s, and we shall overcome. You're the stupidest niggas in the world. We shooting white boys with BB guns. We shooting back. Y'all praying back. Getting socked all over. What the hell? No, what's your crack, crack of wood truck? Spook hunters come and try. They did that when we was little. We find Woody's sporting good and they had BB guns and CO2s. And we went in there and started, and we started busting back. Mm. <laughs> you talk about racism, but I remember watching this movie called Alice. Have you watched it? Uh, Alice, yes. And um, it says based on a true story, but this was after, you know, Racism, I mean, it was abolished, slavery was abolished, all of that, but then you still had people who were still having slaves out in the country Yeah. because they didn't know no better. They didn't read nothing. No, they just didn't have any information for them to know that slavery was right. done. But see, the, the difference between why I'm saying racism, do you really realize why they call, we're in the West Coast, why they call us Southern California? Why? Because all the Peckerwoods that didn't want integration from Mississippi, Georgia, uh, uh, Alabama, uh, uh, 
Texas, they moved to California and set laws called redlining, and they kept niggas in one spot. Mm. And we didn't even know. We thought we was free. Mm. Like I told you, you can go to, like he was talking about, all your celebrities come to California. But you know where they come? Where? Encino, Woodland Hills, Calabasas. Certain parts. Ain't no niggas coming out there. Mm -hmm. And if you are out there, you must be somebody. Mm. See, you, a black I don't know if you know anything about Houston, Texas. In the 70s, there's a section called Post River Oaks. Million dollar peckerwoods lived in Post River Oaks. And the only way a Negro was walking down Post River Oaks, either he was delivering something or they was a maid. Stayed your ass in the third ward or fifth ward. Do not come over past Westheimer. You knew the rules. Muhammad Ali tried to buy a house there for $700,000 and they gave him $3 million not to buy the house. Mm. And then after that, they built, they built Bel Air. But that's the difference in prejudice and racism. When crackers in the South don't want you around, they'll build you a college. They'll build you a mall. And then you still go to Westheimer Mall. In California, they ain't gonna build shit in the ghetto and gonna make you feel uncomfortable when you go to the Beverly Center. Mm. But you go spend your money. You your kids got to go to the movies in their neighborhood. They don't put them in your neighborhood. So that's the di racism affects your economy. Prejudice. The only one that's prejudice is poor patties. Mm -hmm. I got busted for a drug case in Houston, Texas. My mother went to Jackson State University. She had a man by the name of Herb McKinley was a, a, a forensic scientist back in the day. And he had some white boys called Adamo and Cobb. And they came and took me out of the jail. You got $50,000? Yeah. This the only time I've ever been arrested. And they told me to go home. Go on to California. Mm -hmm. We'll call you later. No, they didn't. So made my mama be my wife. Mm. Came and got me out of Harris County Jail 11 o'clock at night. That's my nigga. You're coming to court. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. But I'm telling you right now, man, um, when you look at what people think of when they look at Compton, the West Coast, you we know that if we come up there, you gotta you gotta know somebody or, or you gotta come prepared to be ex I ain't gonna say exploited, but you got to come prepared to understand that there's challenges in places that you go. You come to Texas has its own situation too, or Florida, anywhere you go, there's bad spots, but it's something about LA uh, being one that visits there often to where you look at the news and be like, man, you just like talking to a friend a while ago, like certain places you go, you can't just pull up no anywhere. You can't go to the park. I heard about y'all park. I don't never want to go to the park. I, after hearing you talk about the park, why would I go to the park? Why would you go to the park? I ain't no way in hell I'm going to the, the park. Why would I go to the park <laughs> when I hear the stories I hear about the park? But the park ain't supposed to be bad, do it, babe? Mm -mm. And, and I, I say this all the time. Any man 40 years old, every day hanging in a park is a pedophile. Because children are supposed to be in the park. Mm -hmm. Out of 50 years of gangbanging, y'all ain't bought a building. You in the way. But you go to the park too. And shit, I'm socially retarded. <laughs> Ain't nowhere else to go. Basically. I, got, I can go home though. Yeah, yeah, you can go home. I go, I, I go to the park to make an example. I don't hang out in the park. That ain't some place I gotta be every day. That ain't some place we got to meet. Yeah. The motorcycle club, they got a clubhouse to meet. You come to Compton and look all around, you'll never see a building that say Pyru International, where the Pyrus can go and hang out. But they'll spend three, four hundred dollars a day buying weed and Hennessy, but they won't get 30 of them together and put a hundred dollars together and pay three thousand dollars a month for a building. And they could party in the building and make it pay for itself. But I don't understand that because when you look at hip hop, when you look at all these different people. You got entrepreneurs, man, uh, that's that's out there making money, rapping, and 
they say they pyru, they say they bloods. I'm and, telling and, you, and, I, they and me give, and you talked about this yeah, before. And they ain't giving but back. We can, but what, what, they ain't giving back. I get it. But you got these people, man. You got all these people that rep rep these colors. We see them. Yeah. What is that? Exploitation. The same thing white America been doing to blacks all their life. And now when you see it, you do it too. And if I don't check you on it, I allow you to do it. Wow. You know, that's how people misinterpreted what I said about Chris. Chris, Chris Brown tried to do a lot for Fruit Town. Attempted to do, but they didn't do nothing for him. So sh I'll grow you. You know? And I, I can't understand that you deal with a celebrity and you don't get nothing out the deal. Through Mike Tyson, I was able to buy a house. I was like, it's no detail I've been on with Shahid Muhammad that I didn't be become standard. Rolex watches, all of this stuff. Bro, you got the game. You got a lot of people, man. You got all kind of people. And when they see who you really are, they don't want to deal with you no more. Game didn't just leave Compton because it was some shit that happened that just run him away. It wasn't all his fault. But when you have disloyalty, why am I sitting in a, in a cave of snakes when I can get out? Well, that's real. That's you have real. a choice. Yeah, because it's, it's just, it, you just see all the hip hop and all the, because that, that those songs are out there. Those groups of people that you can go on the internet and see them, they're out there. Yeah. Why they hanging, they wearing the colors, they putting up the signs, they say they represent a people. But you're the but then you're telling me in Compton that there is no there has been no building of businesses. There is no In the city of Compton, it's no from road I just told you from the from the freeway, from Harbor Freeway to the 710 freeway. It's not one black, now it is one black business. Uh, uh, Charlie P just opened up Taco Pete's on Rosecrans in the, in the pond. The, the, now they own black businesses. We got a, a, a lady that owns Jack in the Box, a, a, a family that owns Burger King, but everybody working there is Mexicans. And it's no, a black owned family that owned this. Uh, and Mar uh, Marvin, they don't want to, you got uh, blacks don't, ain't no black don't want to work. What about, I mean, you even got Dr. Dre from down there. He hadn't, what has he done? In Compton. Uh, he just gave, t he gave him $10 million for a school that they've been, uh, it's like, what can I give you when you don't tell me what I, what you need? Mm. I'm just supposed to magically put it out of my hat. If you, it's just like I, I was just telling my daughter the other day about sacrifice and what she has to do with her life. That for every great thing, there's a supreme sacrifice. If you don't give a man imagination, you don't have anything to offer but pussy. All I'm gonna give you, get is from you is pussy. Why should I give, my grandma just told me, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? Yeah, You feel what I'm saying? So you have a generation. When I got out of prison, I didn't know shit, bro. The girls that I went to school with was dealing with old dudes. They showed me about New York, showed me the Constantinople, showed me that I, I had the money, I just didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. First time I went to Hawaii, my, my partners, we was in Fruit Town selling, uh, selling PCP. I told them I was going to Hawaii. They thought I was going to Hawaii Gardens over in Cerritos. They didn't know. And when I went, I sent a, a postcard back to the spot, right? And they said, man, Marvin Waikiki. They said, how did he get there? Drive? Now, we all niggas that got money, man, been to prison. You didn't know that you could not drive to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Man, man we, we didn't know what, how in the hell you got over there. So the next year, I took them. That's why they said knowledge is power, but a lot of people don't power. seek that knowledge. So you got young girls now, their mother haven't given them the part. Them 40-year-old women trying to twerk, trying to be 20. Like they, they miss, in, oh, uh, uh, nigga ain't nothing but whoop the whoop the wham. And they carry on that philosophy. Now their heart get broke. Why should I go to the swap meet with you and I can go with my homeboys? Because at least they're going to help me fight. But when you introduce me to the Beverly Center, 
and I didn't know nothing about uh, um, this girl, uh, Sharon Anderson. She took me to um, Bloomingdale's, 1970, never seen a Macy's, and it was May Company at the time, Sears in California. I didn't know nothing about a Bloomingdale's. T took me to Bloomingdale's, and they was doing fall fashion. Like, what the fuck? What is a fall fashion? I'm looking, they're having fashion shows in a store. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Marv, you like, you, is that cool? Uh, at the time, I was Marvelous Marv, right? Hey. <laughs> Marv, marvelous, <laughs> like that. Like, what? And I had the money to buy it, but I hadn't had the exposure. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, you talking and what about year it, was that? 1977. Oh, okay. Before you was born. A little bit before I was born. <laughs> yeah. Whatever bit it was, you knew what you was was But like you talking about a, a celebrity. I was in prison in California with a, with a man out of Texas named Hollywood Henderson. Hollywood yeah. Henderson was a football player. That's right. Right? So Henderson, he was out of Tyler, Texas. Say he didn't know nothing, just a country boy with a gang of money, right? He said that uh, he was invited, uh, um, Don King invited him to a party in, in, in Las Vegas, right? And he said he was with Debbie Allen, and he said that, 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 that um, uh, Gladys Knight gave him head from uh, uh, Georgia to Memories, right? And he was the oh, man. Wait a minute, he said Gladys, why, Gladys Knight did what? Okay, I, would, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, Gladys I, I was wondering if I heard him. Head. Yes, right, sir, what you yes, said. Yes, what I That's said. That's what Hollywood Henderson, Henderson told, told me. You. He was just, this is his exposure. Debbie Allen, he went gay. He had a, had a list of them, right? And Anita Porter, an ugly girl, out of the Porter sisters, right? And she said, Anita Porter, say, bro, come here, man. What the hell? He said he had a double knit suit on you could stretch to Georgia. <laughs> said he had some rings on, turquoise rings, steel. He, had, he said he had a stainless steel check around his neck, had his whole neck green. He said he had the money, but he didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> right? Wow. He said Anita Porter took him from Las Vegas and put him in the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. Took him to Sausalito, put him silk drawers on silk, took that Timex watch off of him and put a Rolex watch on him. Say, I had the money, I just didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can have shit you own or somebody got to show you what to do with it. Yeah, yeah. One of my little homies told me one time, we're in, we in the county jail in the blood module, and uh, I had on some uh, some valley loafers, or some burgundy valley loafers. I'm like, damn, boy, what you running in them church shoes? Man, I'm a, I see the man said, hey, dude, you want, man, I'm going to be in khakis and, 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 and crocus sacks all my life, but blood on blood. This, I'm going to roll this blood. I ain't never giving this shit up, right? So I see him about six years later, right? What he got on? He he's to the T. <laughs> Damn, more man, I got with this old chick, man. She took man, put me in. Man, I see what because now you grew. Mm-hmm. I said, but didn't you told me one time you would never do this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never say never, man. But you have to have the exposure, and our young black girls don't have it. Ain't nobody gave it to them. I'm 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 the R. Kelly of the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? I me mean, R. Kelly said, well, I don't piss on people. Just say it like that. R. Kelly said, oh, on this record, he said, I'm the Pipe Piper of R and B. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying that went over a lot of people here. You know who the Pipe Piper was, right? Explain, you, huh? Explain for some who might not know. The Pipe Piper is the Pipe Piper is a fairy tale. Right. It's a story tale about this guy, this city was having problem with rats mm -hmm. and these rats were overtaking their city and, and he would play the and so he played a a a, 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 a piccolo mm -hmm. and he told the mayor that i can get rid of your rats for you because mm -hmm. he was a musician and he mesmerized them with the so once he got rid of the rats when he got rid of the rats they wouldn't pay him so the pied piper took their children that's the story of the Pied Piper. Wow. But the Pied Piper came from the biblical story of Jonah. Mm. I didn't know that part. You, you know who Jonah was, right? Mm -hmm. Jonah went through, Jonah did not like the Ninevites like bloods don't like Crips. And he ran and God had to go get him, shuck him out the belly of the whale, they say, but he was in the ghetto. 
He was so deep in the ghetto, it shook him out. And he went to the wall, and he was mad as hell. And as he was sitting at the wall, the, 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 the tree had started dwindling and dying, and he started crying, and God said, do you care more about the tree than the people? And he says, I commission you to go in and tell them, say, uh, Jonah said seven words. If you don't repent in seven days, you will die. And as he was going through the town, the children started following him and they start chanting with him. And as the children chanted, the king heard the chant of the children. And he said that was a revelation. And he took all of his gold off and put on sackcloth and submitted. And the Ninevites is the only race, a black race, is the only race in the Bible that was spared for a time. So that's where the, the, uh, the story comes from Jonah and the children, and then the Pipe Piper. Wow. Right? And the Pipe Piper, the exposure to the Pipe Piper, he learned all the children music, and he taught them all music, and they left the town. And the town had to beg him to get the children back. Wow. I want to ask you about Deion Sanders. Like, he's winning. Matter of fact, he's more popular than I believe even anything that's popular in the NFL right now if you really start to look at the ratings. of He moved from Mississippi up, and he's doing a great job. No matter where he goes, he's doing a great job. He has a golden touch, I say. Yeah, like, like what do you think about him and his movement right now? Well, I, I don't follow sports. I rob banks. Mm, let, okay. let, let's be clear on that. Ain't nobody from the NFL, the HFL, or any of the else ever sent me nail package in prison. So it's another form of slavery to me. Okay. But dealing with Deion Sanders, the, the stuff that I know about him, I'm looking at this brother as to Negroes as misunderstood as Barack Obama was for the stuff that Barack did for black America that you hear people say, well, well, Barack ain't done nothing for us. But what did you do for Barack? What did, we always expect somebody to give us something, but we never want to earn it. These white people got us so handicapped. They, were supposed to, they ain't asked what Biden done for us. Uh -huh. mm -mm. But they talked about, well, with, through uh, Barack Obama's tenure and making homes affordable, more blacks owned houses in his administration than any blacks since the 50s. The home health care. I got Hamana Insurance right now through making uh, uh, medical affordable. Um, the Black Unicorn Factory, IPOs. He manifested that. Now, getting to Deion Sanders, I heard somebody made a comment the other day that he left the HBCU and they would give him $10,000 if they knocked out his son or something. You get, you're going to get somebody hurt because Deion, Deion Sanders took his two sons and people that he groomed and took them to Colorado. He had been trying with Mississippi and they wanted to fund everything but a program. He was putting money out of his pockets for Mississippi. And they didn't appreciate him. We don't appreciate the people that do for us. And then when we go someplace else, you call us a sellout. Us, I'm not saying us because I don't play. I can't even throw a baseball. <laughs> so let, let's get it straight. But I'm saying the amazing job that Deion Sanders doing with a black squad. I understand his, his quarterback is a black one. It's his son. So that's his son. So he's in Colorado in, in a Mormon state. <laughs> putting it down and black people won't stand up on that. He would, Mississippi didn't stand with him. Louisiana didn't stand with him. Texas didn't stand with him. But everybody got something to say about him. So all these coons that ain't doing nothing, that ain't brought a team to nothing, ain't brought nobody up, you, don't, you can't represent 10 people that you made an improvement with. Deion Sanders is making improvements that I'm not inclined with sports, but you just you said today that he got a million dollars from selling glasses. Yeah, yeah. Glasses. That's big. Yeah, he just did that. Everybody in one day. In one day. You know, it's just like we were talking about Captain Shahid Muhammad. I don't want to take nothing from Deion Sanders. And uh, but I'm saying when we don't want to memorialize or give anybody their stripes until they dead. You talk about Martin Luther King, but didn't nobody stand with Martin 
And nobody avenged his death either. But we talk all this, you know, Malcolm, you, you, all these Malcolm lovers. But then nobody put up no un guns and try to avenge his death, huh? It's just talk. Negroes just talk. You know what I'm saying? The Nation of Islam under Minister Louis Farrakhan, Wallace Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, lost all the properties of the Nation of Islam in 1975. The Marcus Garvey movement was destroyed under the King Alfred plan with uh, J. Edgar Hoover, COINTELPRO, the Black Panther Party, the US, all, all of the black organizations. We've never been able to bring Rosewood back. We've never been able to bring um, Black Wall Street. Once something's been destroyed with blacks, it's gone. You want to celebrate it every year, but you don't bring it back to flourish. The Nation of Islam is the only thing that white America's destroyed in 1977. Minister Farrakhan brought it back and it's in full force with no government help. Every black in America, whether you're Muslim or not, should be trying to help with the independence. You dig what I'm saying? So Dion Sanders and his football program, instead of people criticizing, they ought to try to get a black college and let him head a whole black college. You know? Right. Hey, so, um, man, listen, man, thank you so much. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they're looking for you? Man, they can look, they can go to Ayatollah Marv on uh, YouTube, uh, PotsGrowFarms.com, and uh, uh, Pots Grow Farms on Facebook. Man, hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. I appreciate you, man. You always give us the stories we need to hear, man. Legend for me. You know what I'm saying? You the... Uh, they say the oldest living pie Oldest rule. living pie. That's his new name. No, 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 I oldest, didn't name him like that. Somebody no, else could name him that. I, I named myself. Ah, Take it, said, man. He said he not an OG, he an RG now. Yeah. Man. A real hey, gangster. A real gangster. Hey, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we That's right. Out.